Exciting times are ahead, because today we will dive into what's coming with .NET 9. It's about three weeks left until the official release of .NET 9 as part of the .NET Conf 2024 on November 12th. So if you're wondering whether upgrading your existing .NET applications to .NET 9 makes sense, or if you want to wait until .NET 10 coming next year, you're in the right place. By the end of the video, you should have a great understanding of whether upgrading your existing applications to .NET 9 makes sense, or if you want to hold off and wait for .NET 10. Now before we jump into the details of the different areas in this short-term support release .NET 9, I want to set the stage right. With .NET 9, there won't be any new big impact features. Instead, it's packed with a series full of new small features and smart improvements that can make a big difference as a whole. Before we learn about what's coming new with .NET 9, let's talk about what will be missing with .NET 9. With .NET 9, the binary formatter is gone. It is not part of the runtime anymore. While you can still compile the code, it will throw a platform not supported exception at runtime. The main reason here is security concerns. It has already been announced that they will remove the binary formatter at some point in the future. And with .NET 9, we're finally here. There is a NuGet package that you can install to work around the issue if you really need to continue using the binary formatter. However, if possible, it's best to migrate off the binary formatter with your migration to .NET 9. In February 2024, I already looked into what's coming with .NET 9. Although it was early stage, we already knew that we will get three new link methods. The new link methods were count by, aggregate by, and index. Today, I want to show the new index method. Up to .NET 8, we lack a convenient way to retrieve the index of an element when using link methods. Mostly, I fall back to using a traditional for loop. However, in .NET 9 with the new index method, we can now use value tuples and conveniently access the index and the collection element. The syntax might take a while to get used to, but in a few months, you'll be familiar with this syntax even if you haven't used tuples in your code before. With every new version of .NET, we get a new c -sharp release. Besides Param collections, I don't think we get massive new features with c -sharp 13. I think that most features coming with c -sharp 13 are pretty niche and only applicable in specific situations. Let's take a look at Param's collections. Up to .NET 8, we were limited to using arrays when using the params keyword in a method parameter definition. With .NET 9, we can now use most collection types. You can look at the list of all new c 13 features using the link in the video description below. Please let me know in the YouTube comments if you want me to record a dedicated video about all the new features coming with c 13. Now, let's look at what's coming with ASP.NET Core in .NET 9. It's probably my most favorite section, because I do a lot of web development these days. .NET 9 introduces a new project and solution template that includes a .NET MAUI app and a Blazor web application, which both share Razor components in a Razor class library. I haven't had the time to look into it, but I will definitely take a look at it in the future. I prefer using the Razor component model to build applications over XAML technologies. Therefore, when it comes to implementing mobile applications or Windows desktop applications, .NET MAUI hybrid is what I would consider first. Again, please let me know down in the comments below if you want to see a dedicated video where I show you the new solution template for .NET MAUI hybrid applications. You can already use Razor components for .NET MAUI applications in .NET 8, but I'm looking forward to see how much simpler it becomes with the new solution template. The next improvement is a new Blazor feature. We will get an API to detect the current execution location of the component and its interactivity mode. So far, we had to simulate it using the first render parameter of the onAfterRendering async method. 
I haven't tried it, but I'm looking forward to using it and seeing how it will improve the overall workflow when using Blazor for web development. For example, when using JavaScript interactivity, I expect a big improvement in the developer experience. For Blazor server interactivity, we will also get an improved server-side reconnection experience. For me, in most scenarios, Blazor server has proven itself, but I have seen many people online talking about issues with reconnection. This improvement will definitely be helpful and another reason to upgrade existing Blazor applications to .NET 9. Another simple but very useful feature is dependency injection in constructors for Razor components. Previously, we were limited to using the add inject directive or decorating a property with the inject attribute in the code section. Starting with .NET 9, we can use constructor injection in Razor components. There are more subtle changes and improvements for Blazor, such as an improved authentication state provider for Blazor WebAssembly applications and new functionality for the built-in quick grid and the input number components. It's fair to conclude that upgrading existing Blazor applications to .NET 9 makes total sense to me. Besides all the Blazor improvements, we also get new features for SignalR with ASP.NET Core 9. For example, we get polymorphic type support in SignalR hubs. I usually try to keep things simple, but I'm sure it helps in certain situations. Just remember to use the required JSON polymorphic and JSON derived type attributes on the classes. We also get trimming and native AOT support for SignalR server and client implementations. OpenAPI is a well known standard for API documentation and is often used as input for code generation and other tooling. With .NET 9, we get the two methods at OpenAPI and MapOpenAPI, which allow us to generate an OpenAPI specification directly from within the program.cs file. There is also the option to generate the OpenAPI specification during build time using a NuGet package. However, I will leave that for a dedicated video. Again, if you're interested, please let me know down in the comments below. The new Hybrid Cache API is a successor to the existing distributed cache and memory cache implementations. Caching is a complex topic and certainly is too complex to handle in this .NET 9 overview video. However, if you're using any type of caching in your .NET applications, you might want to take a look into the new Hybrid Cache implementation coming with .NET 9. With .NET 9, the .NET test command is now fully integrated with MS Test's building in parallel feature. It means that we can run the tests for the same project across different target frameworks. The terminal logger is now enabled by default when using MS Build. It uses auto detection, but you can also manually turn it off. With .NET 9, the .NET restore command now checks for vulnerabilities in direct and transitive package references. Up to .NET 8, it only checked for direct references. Those are the three most important changes in the .NET SDK, in my opinion. If you want to check out all the changes that happened in .NET 9 in the .NET SDK, please check the link in the video description. The overall goal for .NET MAUI in .NET 9 is improving the performance and the quality of the existing product. For example, by introducing end-to-end -end tests and general bug fixing. The minimum deployment targets for iOS and Mac Catalyst, Android and Windows remain the same with .NET 9. However, we get two new .NET MAUI controls worth mentioning. The hybrid web view enables the hosting of web content in a web view and allows communication between the web view and the hosting application. The title bar control is a Windows specific control that allows you to implement a title bar similar to the one used in Microsoft Office and other Microsoft programs. I have to admit I haven't used .NET MAUI since it became publicly available. However, if you want to learn more about all the changes coming with .NET 9 relevant to .NET MAUI, 
Again, there's a link in the video description below. One of the most significant improvements for Entity Framework Core 9 is the Azure Cosmos DB support for NoSQL. It comes with an extensive list of improvements. And as with every .NET iteration, we also get improved link capabilities and performance with .NET 9. For example, we get support for using group by and the execute update method with complex types. Another small but highly welcome change is how Entity Framework Core handles where clauses with count greater than zero. Previously, it used the count function and with .NET 9, it translates the link query into a SQL statement using the exists function. There is a lot more coming with Entity Framework Core 9. However, I'm not an expert on this topic. Again, you can learn more about all the changes coming with EF Core 9 in the link in the video description below. Now, let's move on to a topic relevant to all types of .NET applications performance. Once again, with .NET 9, we get the fastest .NET ever. Stephen Taupe didn't disappoint and wrote another masterpiece about the performance improvements in .NET 9. Out of 7,500 pull requests merged into the .NET runtime, there are over 350 performance relevant improvements. Stephen explains the improvements in great detail in his massive, about 300 page long blog post. Every chapter, for example, JSON parsing, shows considerable performance improvements. Everything combined is a welcomed and free performance boost available to all .NET applications that we migrate from an earlier version to .NET 9. You can find a link to this masterpiece down in the video description. I spent countless hours working with the preview versions and the release candidates of .NET 9. And I really hope this overview will help you get started and familiarize yourself with .NET 9. Everything I talked about in this video is based on the release candidate 2 of .NET 9. Usually there aren't any remarkable changes going from the release candidate to the final product. However, should there be any relevant last minute changes, I will let you know about them in the pinned comment down below. And while you're down there, consider liking the video and consider subscribing to the channel if you want to learn more about .NET development in the future.